All right, so I just wanted to um, share that today, 11, what is today? Today is the 16th of November. That uh, today is the first day I've decided to um, start a new test of doing three grams every other day, probably for a couple weeks, and just see if um, a tolerance is built up is built up during that. Um, and meditating for two to three hours completely motionless and doing that every other day um, so that's that's this new test I'm going to uh, embark on starting today because that is what I have done today so now I want to recap um, today's the 16th uh, today is when is it? so it's it was 10 days. Is that right? Seven, eight, nine. Maybe it was just nine days. Nine or 10 days of complete sobriety from my original um, test of 12 days of taking psilocybin intensively. Um, and sometimes in the middle of the night at 3 a.m. and sometimes in the day. So that was a previous test. I had nine days of sobriety now nine or ten days to kind of reset tolerance yeah now we're just going to try this new three grams every other day in the afternoon with sitting in complete stillness as long as possible probably indoors because it's actually getting cooler outside um, but not that that's a big thing. I can bundle up and sit outdoors a little bit. We're actually having a minor cold spell here in California. Um, where it's getting down in the mid-60s at night. Which, you know, for us, we're so spoiled with our weather. But that's, it feels like, you know, beanies and multiple layers sometimes. Dealing with mid-60s temperatures. It's just so silly. But um, uh, anyway, I'll probably just sit inside. Just... Um, for this portion of the experiment um, because I want to just go so deep into the stillness like I did today. So anyway, that's what I'm going to embark on starting today. And um, we'll see what kind of recordings I make um, in conjunction with that. But I also wanted to restate what it's been like for this nine or ten days of sobriety. Because part of the part of the um, test was to see um, with after taking literally five ounces of mushrooms over a two month period, you know, and then that twelve day solid intensive building up to thirteen grams a day, um, I wanted to see if I was going to have some withdrawals or if there was any uh, mood effects. Uh, levels of energy, levels of clarity, um, any other, you know, physical effects, biological effects, um, or any of that. So I will say this, I had grown to really enjoy the level of silence in the meditations and the intensity of clarity under psilocybin that I think I was starting to develop a very slight, um, it's not a chemical, um, a chem yeah, how am I going to say this? It's not a chemical addiction. I think it was because a chemical addiction, uh, a chemical addiction is way different. You just feel 
absolute need for the thing, whatever it be, nicotine and tobacco smokers. Um, I think people that drink a lot of caffeine mm -hmm. feel the need to drink it. Um, alcohol addiction, obviously it's a chemical dependency that develops in the body. And so that's not how psilocybin acts. Even with that, all that intensity, it's more, I think, the, the very slight addiction I felt um, is just me truly enjoying the state I was in. So I would say after day five, that was completely gone. But again, it was very slight. It's just something I took notice of. That it was like, oh, I'm sober today, but man, I could really enjoy going back into that state. It was just that. But it was, there was no chemical need. So I'm just sharing this to be, you know, 100% honest of how my experiences were. So other than that, after the fifth day, I felt like all psilocybin was out of my system. At least that was my feeling. Fifth or sixth day. Like I could still feel um, a little bit on the fifth day. So yeah, after the sixth day, I could have been fully reset. I don't know. I decided just to go longer. Plus I was super busy at work. So um, I really had to be a lot more present during this time. So um yeah, it was actually perfect. Everything just works out so dang perfect sometimes. The intensity of my work needs just aligned with me being sober. In the previous 12 days, I'm not really needing to be present. Um, worked out beautifully. So, um, yeah. And I think this on and off again for the next couple of weeks is going to work out really well too with the intensity of my, my job and um, what I need to focus on. Because we're building a house for a lovely couple right now. Anyway. Um, so yeah, I wanted to be completely clear about this nine days after consuming, you know, five ounces. Um, and getting up. And I noticed a, a definite tolerance building up. That 13 grams was, you know, it wasn't really phasing me. And I didn't really want to go any further. You know, it made no sense because it just would be very expensive at that point. <laughs> um, I mean, the going rate of these mushrooms from the my supplier is $15 a gram. If people buy them at less than ounce quantities. So you can imagine that's at 13 grams times 15 um, let me do that rough math, but it's actually, my mind is not really in math mode, but it's a lot, <laughs> you know, that's, um, that's a $200 a day, um, adventure. So, but I obviously don't pay that much at all. Um, <clears throat> when, um, you know, I, I purchase a very large amount, let's just say that, um, but um, it's a tiny fraction of that amount. <laughs> so it's easy for me to conduct these experiments without like hurting my bank account. So um, didn't mean to go into the, the financials of it, but you know, I guess that's a realistic part, you know, for those that aren't actually growing their own. Um, that's just a, a reality of it. Um, because not everybody wants to go into the adventure of, of growing their own, becoming a mycologist, an amateur mycologist. All right, so back on the topic now of um, the nine days. So, yeah, after that, um, as far as clarity, beautifully clear the whole time. Any other physiological effects? Um, no. No. I can't really say there were any. Um, other than what I stated, there was no withdrawals at all. 
other than maybe, yeah, that very slight missing of the experience of, of the intensity of that universal connection that I felt. Um, but you just feel it in a different way. It's just less intense in, in the sobriety, honestly. It's just less intense, but it's still there. It still carries on for quite some time. Um, you know, and with proper use of meditation, that will last indefinitely. I mean, that is the purpose of meditation and contemplation is to attain those levels of consciousness indefinitely and bring it into your world, right? So, you know, it's the same way I view psilocybin. It's like whatever consciousness you attain, you, you endeavor to make it manifest permanently. You know, you're not looking to the fungi as a crutch. You learn from the experience and embody it. So anyway, um, was there anything else? Yeah, I don't really think there's anything else to say on it. It was just so clean. Like I've been saying, the experience of psilocybin is so clean. It doesn't seem to leave any residual effects in the body other than very slight difficulty in sleeping, but I'm learning actually how to deal with that um, in a different way. So it's actually a really good thing. I'm learning how to sleep better because of um, how clear my mind is that it's actually enjoyment when I lay the body down to just go into the deep stillness without sleeping. That's kind of what happens or has been happening is that you are still in bed, but your mind is perfectly clear. It's just a meditative state where you don't really enter into a deep sleep state. So, um, and you need to enter into a deep sleep state. And uh, for a slight period of time, I was having a difficulty doing that. And But now, I think I've learned a technique to, to deal with that. So I'm going to apply it some more before I mention it. Um, and get into a complete habit of that and make sure it's... It's truly allowing me to do that, enter into the deep state. Um, you know, in conjunction with this, I want to share one thing. Because um, in the previous video, I talked about going or endeavoring to remove from my mind every single worldly, worldly thought, and that that was a necessity for the awakening that occurred in me, was to remove every single worldly thought, to see it for what it was, a human concept that held no weight upon universal knowledge, and discard it. And I had said in there that it took me seven to 10 days of doing, and the reason why I don't know is because I don't know when it began. I think it started slowly, but then it got full on definitely for seven days. I mean, and this is, this is the addendum I want to make right now is that, um, because this is what I just said about my sleep ties into this, okay? So you, when you enter into these really high states of consciousness, I entered in with my teacher in Mexico, and this was 100% sober, okay? There was no nothing, no substance being eaten. I ate two meals a day. That was my entire substance, substance intake into the physical body. Um was um, 
So the states I was experiencing during taking all the psilocybin and not being able to sleep well, where your consciousness is kind of awake at all times, even in your sleep, you're, you're conscious of your sleep. And that happened to me in Mexico too. During that time of removing all the human concepts, I started to not sleep and that I was conscious through almost the entirety of the night. And that's why I had said it, take, it, take, it had taken me at least seven days, 24 hours a day. And I wasn't joking about that because I stopped sleeping and you were conscious. Well, what I mean by stop sleeping is that you were in a state of rest. The body was down, eyes were closed, but you were conscious almost the entire night. And that's how I maintained the certainty of removing all worldly concepts. And, and it just happened that way where you were conscious through almost the entire sleeping process in order to maintain, because even while sleeping and having the body down, the body would constantly be reporting to you, oh, a tingle in your leg, an itch in your arm, um, you know, or a minor, you know, all these thoughts, with all these feelings would arise in the body and you had to annihilate them all. Yeah, I'm not joking. You have to annihilate them all because that itch in your arm or the tingle in the leg is every bit of it is an acknowledgement of the limiting presence of the body. Okay. Every single bit of it has to be annihilated and annihilated might not be the right word, but another way to put it is you are converting all the messages the body sends you to the mind, to your consciousness of it reporting these sensual um, experiences, these tingles, the hunger, the, the, um, you know, every, every bit of it, you have to re-qualify into God. Every single bit of it. And that's what I meant by annihilating it is that you were requalifying it into God. And so every thought, every feeling, if you, to do this for seven to 10 days unceasingly, so that you, every feeling you have in your body, every thought that comes through your mind, it is all requalified into the perfection of, of what you acknowledge as God or the Supreme source or the great light, whatever it is for you to completely requalify every last ounce of it. And so that your, your mind becomes completely singular, singular. There's no other way to attain that singularity than to completely requalify all human thought, all human feeling. And that is what I was trying probably to crudely express in that, in whatever video it was, one or two back, um, of the necessity of doing that for complete awakening to occur. It can't happen any other way. You have to endeavor to reach that singularity of existence on your own, unaided. And when you make that effort, you will be rewarded. 
So I just wanted to, I guess, take this moment of um, maybe touching on that just a little bit deeper for those who are going to make that endeavor, who are, who feel compelled to become fully awakened. To have that experience, I mean, I I tell you, it will be it will be like having your physicality ripped in half when that bolt of light touches your mind and your spine of your body. The moment you reach that point of absolute singularity. It will feel like your whole being gets ripped in half in a good way. And you will be struck by that bolt of light so intense. And it will bring with it an experience of authenticity, of being that nothing else will be able to ever present to you in this physical world. It will shatter the hold the physical world has on you forever. And there's no other way to, number one, attain that moment, or or for me to even convey it with words anymore. Because the words will never, ever, do that moment justice. There is no way to convey with words the moment of a person's awakening. Because you will know through and through that this physical world no longer has a hold on you. And that freedom that comes with that is greater than all the wealth of this world combined. Uh, tears streaming down my cheeks from just me remembering my moment. I didn't realize I was going to go into this when I started this recording, but it just kind of played out. So there it is. You know, I just realized... um, this ties in with one more thing and you know with me just sharing that moment of my own awakening um and reaching you know in conjunction with the need to reach that intense experience of complete excuse me i just drink some kombucha um with the absolute requirement of reaching that singularity of mind and feeling in order for the great awakening to happen. That ties in with what I was saying, um, how all worldly knowledge or worldly I concepts. I'm not even going to call it knowledge because it, it's kind of not. <laughs> um, all of our concepts, we're just going to term it concept. All of our concepts of the world that humanity has fumbled around to coalesce, you know, their, their descriptions of so-called reality. This is why I've said before, actually probably a few times, I don't remember how many, I'm certainly it's been a few, about 
how important it is not to generate more worldly concepts. Because at some point, you're going to have to not do it. In order to fully awaken every last thing you think you know about the world has to be removed to reach that point of absolute singularity. You know, I have never talked about it in these terms before today. But I'm speaking this and realizing that singularity is actually a really apropos word for the level of consciousness that is needed to awaken. And that is actually absolutely perfect description for anybody to reach that attainment a full awakening is singularity because that is how you have to transform every feeling of the body and every thought of the mind into absolute singularity. You have to requalify every single experience that the world is reporting to your senses as you walk and move and sit and eat in it for a period of time. You have to requalify every last bit of it as God or pure light or your, the great source. Whether, like I said before, whatever you term your concept of the supreme oneness of life, okay? Whatever it is, it does not matter. But you have to qualify every last bit of your mind and body feeling into singular, perfect singularity. And so the point I want to make is gaining more worldly knowledge puts you behind. It actually burdens you. You know, I sent that message out to a few of my friends and acquaintances, um, you know, about, I heard Sadhguru say that for the first time. I just happened to click on something before I went to work. It was like a little six minute video that someone posted, uh, him answering somebody's question, but he, he said that, and that's what triggered in me, um, a remembrance and I had sent a message out to my friends saying, you know, I had just heard Sadhguru say this and I think, and it's um, probably my favorite quote from ever because unless you're awakened, you don't realize how important that is. Until a person fully awakens, you have no idea how important it is to empty your mind completely. And when he said, I am not an educated man, and it is very hard to remain uneducated, I knew exactly, exactly what he was talking about. The audience laughed, but, you know, it makes me wonder just how many people understand what he was saying right there. And I'm going to, I'm trying to say this to you now is I'm going to let my cat out real quick here because I want you to hear this from me too, from my own personal experience is that, that, that concept, that understanding of not collecting more worldly concepts is so important because it adds to the burden 
that each person must then let go to fully awaken, which is your only purpose. So this is why I'm stressing in this little <laughs> tangent here, or this recording that it is, you know, and this is why I, I've been sharing with, you know, a friend or two about why um, I feel it's so important not to engage in so much of this new age um, I don't know it's just a different type of addressing spirituality that to me is I'm not going to call it nonsense but it doesn't need to be there the, the the new language, the new words, the new concepts of talking about all these different dimensions and different beings, you know, to an unawakened person, it's just going to be more clutter. And even for me, being awakened, it still feels like clutter. I don't want any of it in my mind. And maybe that's just me. Maybe I'm old school. <laughs> um, you know, I, I kind of have this running conversation with a, my dearest friend about this, that um, maybe I'm just old school and I don't want any additional clutter and new hum, human concepts. Because it is. It's all human concepts. It's It's not... It's not from the divine because um, the divine doesn't need these concepts. You know what I mean? And that's the consciousness you're trying to attain with your awakening. is tapping into a slow, gradual release of divine consciousness back into your, your use. So... And it's not, you know, it, I guess I'll say this. When you, when you awaken, you're still just in kindergarten, okay? Because you don't get shown everything in the universe on an instant. You will see, you will feel a lot and experience a lot. But it, you will 100% realize you are just in kindergarten, and there is so much more upon a full awakening. But it is necessary for progress to occur. And the divine mind will slowly trickle into your use as you remain committed. And um, non-distracted. Actually, that being, not being distracted is definitely a, a part of your commitment in the light. Because that's the only thing that can happen once you awaken is that you, you become distracted. You can't be enmeshed anymore like the unawakened are, you are, you, it's impossible. The world cannot hold you anymore. But you can be distracted or sidelined. And so I guess that's the, what I wanted to say with this is that's why I stress so much about, or why I'm concerned about some of this newer age spirituality, spirituality being discussed is that when I know it's unawakened beings discussing it, okay? Because here, here's the difference. I don't want to sound pretentious, <laughs> but... When you awake, you will know 
who is and who isn't. I, I can't explain how or why. But after you have your, your awakening, you will know who is and who isn't. Not like directly. Like it, it, it takes me a while just to hear people talk about stuff. But you give me a few moments and you just know. And it's not a condemnation. It's not judgment. It's just a knowing. Because when you awaken, you don't really judge. judge. Judgment is not the same thing. It's a perception of reality that takes hold. It's no longer judgment. It's that one's perception of reality is so strong that you can, it's a very distinct um, division between what is real and what is not real from that point on, okay? You just know. And it, it's any language that is used, anybody who's talking about something, how they express it, you know. And I remember the first time I listened to Sadhguru, I knew he was somebody who knew what he was talking about. It was just, I just knew he had done it. The way he said things and the way he described it I, was exactly identical for me. Or, or roughly, you know. But, and that's going to be true for anybody who's fully awakened because there is one thing about the light. It, it is 100% consistent. Okay? Think about that word. Because we do not have consistency, much consistency in the, in the human experience, right? Um, that's one thing that's really lacking. But the light, knowledge, divinity, and its expression, and its awakening for each of the children is 100% consistent. And that's how you know. And that's just how, and there's something in that consistency that allows you to distinguish others who are awake or not awake. Or those who are causing distraction and those who are not. You just know. And I've never spoken about it like this before. This is the very first time. So it's probably going to come off as being, you know, I, I think pretentious is the right word. <laughs> um, but I promise you, this has zero ego in it. I'm trying to explain the best that words are allowing me to. The, just the difference and why it's so important to endeavor to fully awaken. You know, even if you don't make your ascension in this embodiment, it doesn't really matter. But to awaken is critical because every embodiment you have to do after this will be a breeze you will no longer be bound. Your progress will be immense. So, you know, and I realize the I am teaching doesn't talk about being awakened in this sense. Because they really, I mean, St. Germain's instruction, all the Ascended Masters, they really want everybody to focus on the greatest achievement of graduating from the schoolroom, right? Of the ascension. And that's perfectly fine. I mean, obviously I'm not going to fault them, <laughs> but there's definitely something to reaching the point of just being fully awakened where nothing can ever hold you down again. 
You will never be deluded. You will never be caught in the traps. You will never not progress. Because there's nothing that can hold you anymore. You can instantly, like, like I said before, yes, you can probably be distracted by the world. And I felt that as I started my business in a family, right? That's what's happened to me. I've been slightly distracted, you know, over the last 12 years, 15 years, slightly distracted. And that's just the nature of having a business and having a family. And that's what I was saying before about the attention. You, your attention gets divided when you have businesses and a family. And at some point, I'm going to remove myself from all that. So it's 100% attention again. And that's what I was saying in that one video back. It's going to probably take me 10 years or so to get to that point again that I had the luxury of doing in my 20s before I got burdened with life's responsibilities and decided to reintegrate into the world. So, anyway, I just wanted to make this point so crystal clear is that, you know, there is a slight danger in accumulating new concepts that don't need to be there. The old school ways work just fine. <laughs> OG, right? Original gangster. That's what they say. We'll call Jesus OG. He's, he's the original gangster of light. You know, I mean, there was, there was many before him, many more OGs, but this is why I feel they never go into all this descriptive stuff that humanity tries to connect with being spiritually awakened that I really just don't see. In fact, I see it all as an obstacle. And I hope I've made that clear in this recording. You know? Thank you. I love you. All right, so to sum up this whole um, video or recording, I'm going to say one last thing, and that is the reason why I find it's still important to not gather more worldly information and knowledge or worldly concepts and worldly ideas, even if they be in people describing spiritual realms or things that seem like they're positive and, and of service in nature, is that <clears throat> the thing is, when you fully awaken, I think there's no other way to really understand this, is that when you have to, when you use the singularity to achieve that state, you don't really want to be doing anything else after you've achieved that state. Because it wasn't only for the purpose of achieving that state, but along with it becomes a full recognition that, And I've said this in other videos that you, you empty your cup, right? So it can be filled by the divine knowledge. And that's the difference because you realize that every bit of knowledge that you gather from the human perspective of things is just that it's erroneous. And you end up starting to fill your cup again with human concepts and human ideas. When, if you remain empty, if you remain unlearned, 
Even if you had been learned before, let's say you went to university in life and you had your head filled up with all kinds of ideas that universities do. And let's say you did some postdoctorate work and um, all that stuff. <clears throat> That's a lot of stuff you're going to have to let go. Let's say you were a doctor, a, a you know, a pediatrician or a, or whatever doctor, it doesn't really matter, um, foot doctor even, that every time, I mean, I'm going to give you this example. Every time you have a tingling in your foot, your whole mind is going to swirl with all those human concepts of what that tingling can be and what it means. And the same with nutrition. Every time your body, you have, you know, um, a slight lack of energy or um, you can't do this, you can't do that. All, all that nutritional study you do of the human concept, with human concept, human perspective on things, all is erroneous as you go deeper into the light. And I say that because of this. Um, I mean, the reality is this. When at some point... You don't even need to eat. Okay? It's, I'm not saying we should all become breathitarians, but I'm just saying, you know, at the height, you know, sometime before ascension, you're going to experience something most likely that you, you'll come to the realization where you don't even need to eat. That you can be sustained by the light. And what's happening there? You're not getting nutrition from food anymore, but your body is sustained. So if you consider this, you'll realize that even the act of eating and all the nutritional knowledge or, or tr nutritional concepts that humans endeavor to stuff into their heads is completely erroneous at a certain degree, is it not? <clears throat> so I'm just using that as an example and that, and I'm using the doctor as an example is that the more you, you think you're learning about the physical body, you're actually doing yourself a great detriment. The greatest thing you could possibly do is requalify every feeling in your physical form with perfection, every tingle, every itch. Every burning sensation, whatever it be, if you requalify it with perfection. I'm just saying this because this is the way I approach life. And this is the way I've been taught to approach life on the inner and the outer. I've been taught this. So I am going to pursue this to the nth. I do not go to uh, physicians for anything. The last time I went there is when I ripped my leg open being an idiot. I had to have like 23 stitches in my, my lower leg. So, um, at that point I realized I'm not going to be an idiot any longer. So, or making bad judgment calls. <laughs> That's the last time I was 21 years old. I'm 48 now. That was the last time I went to a doctor. And ever since then, because I became awake shortly thereafter, I was 22 or 23 years old. So... Um, and so that's how I conduct my life. Now that's not going to be the best advice for everybody because let's say you're already so committed to the worldly medical field and what, and you, whatever the doctor says you take in and you, you follow it to a T, um, that's not going to be the path for you in this embodiment. Okay, let's just say that. In this embodiment, just stay with what, what's, stay with the worldly concepts because <clears throat> unless you are 100% committed to going on the path of light and to change from that, to, to, to change from dependence on the opinions and human concepts of the world, it's going to be a hard thing because now you've already qualified your body in such a degree 
that everything has a negative meaning in the body. So that's what I'm saying. It's a hard thing to convert the longer you go in life. It's a very hard thing to convert. I was fortunate to start way young, you know, in my teens on this path. So it was way easier. I didn't have decades and decades and decades of human concepts being shoved into my consciousness from the outer world. I was already breaking out of that at 15 years old. So it's different. It was a different path for me. It's not going to be the same for everybody. So I'm just saying, you don't need to do this in this embodiment. Just hope, hope for a more illumined one next time. But for those that are already kind of on this path of breaking free of all these human concepts, then, you know, this can be of use. I've kind of lost my original point, but I'm going to circle back to it here of, okay, so here's my real original point <laughs> is, you know, when I see all these outer world concepts um, that I don't think need to exist, and that is the reason why is you'll start refilling your cup. And as you, as you start putting all this more blockage into your being, you will lose your sensitivity to the divine. You will lose sensitivity to your divinity, to the finer impulses, the more human concepts you stuff into your head. And this is a very important point because once you awaken, you'll realize how important it is to stay completely pure and empty as much as possible. Because the more empty you are, the more true universal knowledge can come in. It doesn't have anything to fight with. It has to be welcomed. See, that's the thing about life. It doesn't force itself. It has to feel welcomed. You have to invite it in. And by remaining empty of human concepts, you are welcoming, you are inviting divine knowledge to fill you. That's probably the best way I could describe it. You are creating the conditions you, you are in the process of creating the proper conditions of being a recipient of divine instruction and knowledge when you remain free of all humanly generated concepts, including those that come from the outer world describing all this fanciful, you know, golden age stuff. Because that stuff seems good. And there's not really a direct harm in it, right? They're, they're, I mean, they're, they're, people are talking about this and that description, trying to give beautiful illustrations of what a golden age will be or this or that. And it seems, you know, it seems innocuous and safe. But that's why I, there's just a line. And I feel it so definitively. I'm hoping this recording captures that and I've conveyed it good enough that even those things are human concept and a blockage. And that just shows how much else is a blockage when even trying to describe the light can be a blockage. And that's why I was so, I was gravitating so heavily to Sadhguru's saying that because I, I don't think I've ever heard somebody, I mean, I know there's so many things out there. Like uh, maybe you've heard the, the less, you know, the more, you know, the less, you know, maybe you've heard that one. That's kind of hitting on the same point. The more, you know, 
the less you know. It's saying, well, whoever said that is saying the same thing. That the more human concepts you have, the more stupid you are. Because it's all blocking true divine concepts from filling your mind and being. And that is what we want. That is what the awakened individuals strive for. Is to be more empty. So they can be more filled. By the things that matter. I think I've said enough. Thank you. 11 months.